Hello everyone, it's Jack from Visual Effects Hut again, and today I'm here to teach you how to do isometric renders um, using Octane and Cinema 4D. So it's just a little simple tutorial how to set up the camera and just do a really basic render. So I'm going to start with a cube as our little room and I'm going to kill some of the faces and then extrude this out. Don't want to make it too fat. And then I'm just going to add a sphere. Knock the segments up. And then we will add a pyramid as well. With nice smooth edges. Do, do, do. Okay, cool. So you've got your isometric scene. Make this a bit smaller. And um, so now if we hit the render button, we get to this and it's hard to line up. So the best thing to do is to create your octane camera and then under projection, change it to isometric. And when we look in the camera, it does a weird thing but we will be looking at our render in an isometric way. So you just have to play with rotation to get it right. For the look you're going for, I think roughly about 15 should do it. Maybe 12. Because I want it to be quite straight. Okay, cool. And then that just leaves lighting and texturing. So for this purpose, I'm just going to set the camera up to somewhere fake. So it's like a fake isometric just to work with. And I'm going to create a few diffuse materials. And a nice shiny one. But first I'm going to create a HDR sky. It's just taking time to calculate. So first I'm gonna position the HDR. Um, it is sometimes good to create a diffuse material even though you never get anything perfectly white in the real world and just plunk it on there and then set the camera's white balance to that colour Another trick is to create a texture environment that matches the same colour. As the render, but that will change in a bit. So we've got our glossy colours and we will go for we'll go for like salmony pinky type things. Nice. 
and then we're gonna go the same but in the blues. cool sometimes to have the background match the same colour as one of the objects. It's easier to work with. And then just to help the look, you can spin round the light and see what vibe you want to go for. What helps your renders really is having smooth edges, especially with this sort of thing. So I think um, the only thing I'd change on this render now is probably just by having one of these pink again, but making it a diffused material. And obviously, by adding surface imperfections, I can really make this render pop and make it look more realistic. So that's pretty much how you set up an isometric render. Adding lights and stuff will make this look even neater. And also some tricks on creating funky style stuff using the cloner. So let's do that first. Plunk that in there. Um, in Linear you've got a to grid, which means that you can do funky stuff like this. Create these little mazes of craziness. It's good for inspiration for these type renders as well. You can do really quirky things with depth of field in isometric as well, creating cool new cool new vibes like that, the, the new stuff that's throwing around. So say if we want to go for something like that, let's just sort our centre frame out. Need to add some more clones. You can do some really cool stuff. Actually, yeah, just stick with three, it's quite nice. Odd numbers work. Especially for anything graphical. So if we go for something like this now, and then let's just play with lights. So again, we'll set up as if We're nearly that camera. And then we will add some Octane Area Lights. Strips work nice. The three point lighting setup won't really work here. Might need to shrink these down too. So we'll give a hair light and see what it does. It'll only work on the top few though, probably. So by reducing them down, we will get a completely different look. And obviously, 
bigger we get, the harder the shadows. We don't want that. We want them nice and soft. So we'll bring them there. Remember, we're just looking at this size of the frame. Top and bottom doesn't really matter, unless you're doing an animation. It is quite tricky because we want to stay true to that soft look. And then we can go into the camera as well. This should be set to linear. Responsive 2.2. I like stuff to look filming, so that's always pretty much up for me. But that's how you do weird, funky, kind of cool isometric stuff. Obviously, there's way more you can do, you can do animation and cool things but a lot of people don't know how to set up the isometric camera probably because it's so clunky but that's how you do it and a little few tips on to get this sort of style obviously it's not groundbreaking and there's better stuff out there but this is just a little something to get you started with isometric stuff hopefully it's helped and I will catch you on the next tutorial